Hi guys, Anne McKinnell here. Thanks again for joining me. This lesson is all about golden hour. Sunrise and sunset are usually considered the best times for photography because of all the drama going on in the sky. But during those times, there's very little light on the land. When you want a rich, warm, golden glow to light up the landscape itself, the golden hours are prime time. In fact, we often call them magic hours because of the incredible quality of light. Notice how the soft golden light emphasizes the color of this cactus. The side light emphasizes the shape. And the pretty light is bringing out the red and the rocks in the background. During harsher mid-afternoon light, with an absolute clear sky like this, the same composition would be boring. Here on the Oregon coast, because the sun is still above the horizon, I'm getting great light on the water as it crashes into the shore. Any earlier in the day, and those would have been blown out highlights. Any later, and there would be no detail at all. So, when do the golden hours happen? The golden hours happen the hour after sunrise and the hour before sunset. But believe me, it doesn't usually last an hour. Depending on the clouds in the sky, it can often be a magic moment, not an hour. If there are clouds on the horizon, you might not get golden light at all. But if there is a gap in the clouds close to the horizon where the sun will set, that's when you can expect magic minutes. And often, those minutes are better than the occasions when you do get an hour. But you have to be ready. As a photographer, you should always be keeping your eye on the horizon where the sun will set. If you have clouds in the sky, and a gap where there are no clouds right on the horizon, you'll have a chance at capturing this magic light. So get out there and find a good spot early. So why do we like this kind of light so much? Let's think about those three characteristics of light that we talked about before. First, the direction of light. If you use side light during golden hour, you'll find that when the sun is low in the sky, there are long shadows. Not harsh shadows, but long shadows, which add dimension to the scene. You'll get a lot of texture and depth without extremes in contrast. The part about it not being harsh shadows is important because it means that the scene is quite evenly lit, making it easy to get a good exposure. You can use all three directions of light, but golden hour is the perfect time to photograph with front light. Usually front light is too harsh to work with, but during golden hour, the soft quality of the light makes all the difference. Quality is the second characteristic of light. The quality of the light is very soft during golden hour. When the sun is close to the horizon, the light has to travel through more atmosphere, which makes the light softer than when the sun is high in the sky. This photo shows one of my favorite techniques, which is to photograph the golden light as it touches the tops of mountains. It adds a unique kind of drama to your scene. Here's another example of this technique. During golden hour, there's still enough ambient light to capture details in the canyon. A few minutes later, and this entire canyon was completely dark. Here's another example of that same technique. In the American Southwest, there is a lot of red rock. The rock can change from a light orange to a deep red shade during golden hour. That brings me to the third characteristic of light, which is color. Golden light is very warm. In fact, you can often get an amazing golden glow. Let's take a look at another example here. I'll show you these two photos side by side. Okay, so this is Devil's Tower in Wyoming. The first photo on the left I made during afternoon light when the light was still quite harsh. The second photo on the right I made only 15 minutes later. Obviously I changed locations during those 15 minutes, but notice the difference in the color of the rock. It's quite amazing and that is all due to the color of the light during golden hour. Finally, golden hour can be absolutely magical against a dark sky. So if it's been raining, 
and you see that that gap on the horizon where the sun will set, you might have an opportunity to make a photo like this where you get golden grasses against a dark blue sky. You might even get a rainbow. So don't let the rain stop you from missing a golden minute of opportunity. And keep your eye on that gap where the sun will set. And if there's no clouds right on the horizon there, this is your opportunity for golden light. Okay, it's time for your assignment. First, choose a location to photograph during golden hour. I'd like you to scout out the location ahead of time. Figure out where the sun will set then turn your back to it and see where the front light will be. Now that you know what, know what will be lit up during golden hour, find a composition. Next, return to that location as many times as necessary to get the shot. It's nice to have a place in mind that's close to home, so that when you see that gap on the horizon I was talking about, you'll have time to run out and know exactly where you're going to get the shot. Okay, see you next time. Bye for now.